All right, just a quick review this time. So we'll be covering a pistol I am borrowing at the moment. Um, so this is the Smith & Wesson uh, M&P Shield 2.0. It's not the plus model, but it's the 2.0. Um, and this is, you know, roughly equivalent to another uh, one of my uh, favorite carry guns, the Walther PPS, as you can see here. I've already uh, reviewed this one, but in a lot of ways, uh, it is uh, the shield is very similar to the uh, PPS. So, oh yeah, I'm currently borrowing this right now, um, and this particular model is the um, the integrated laser edition. So. You can see that, that red button and how the, uh, the frame here is sculpted a bit differently. This is non-removable as far as I know. Um, and it also has the manual safety here. And I believe this, this, uh, this particular version also came with a, um, like a security locked uh, type of case and a, uh, a holster as well, which is pretty nice. So nice little package deal there for you. This is actually a, a, you know, not a bad holster. It's pretty comfortable, I have to say. And of course, comes with a eight round and a seven round magazine. So uh, I'll be honest, like I, I haven't really done a whole lot with uh, Smith & Wesson uh, polymer frame pistols like this. I, I don't know why, but I, I just, they haven't really uh, caught my attention too much. And so I haven't really done any kind of real work with them, shot them a whole lot. And I've never owned one. So um, when my girlfriend's dad was stopping here in town, uh, he let me take this out for a spin. So uh, I have only just a couple rounds through this. Not not my usual, you know, three, three, four, five hundred rounds, but um, still, I think, plenty enough rounds to get kind of a feel for how this gun shoots and operates. So um, as far as ergonomics and how it feels, uh, I actually really like how these things feel because I, I have not held a, a regular non-plus model shield in my hand uh, before. So when I, when I picked this up, I was like, yeah, that, that, that's that's pretty comfy. The texture here on the grip as well, uh, a lot of people say it's, it's, it's very rough, and it is. Uh, I don't find it uncomfortable at all. I find it actually pretty, um, pretty well textured and, and, and controllable. You know, if you have even wet hands, this will probably stick in your hand um, very, very well. Uh, the manual safety, which is right there. Uh, it looks very, very small and very diminutive, but um, for me, uh, the and most important part with the manual safety is the speed at which you can flick it off with uh, a thumb uh, on, on your firing hand. And so in, in that way, uh, it actually is very, uh, very well positioned and certainly plenty enough to get a good enough um, uh, slide it off and you're ready to go on draw. So um, pretty good, uh, pretty good design there. Actually, uh, I did not expect much when I when I saw it, I'll be honest, but uh, it actually works quite well. The slide release is, is, of course, really small as well. Um, this uh, this particular gun is is unusually stiff with the with the slide release here. When you have a magazine in or, or empty magazine, it, it's very very stiff. It's very hard to get down. Um, but when you have a, a loaded magazine, um, it works just like any other. So nothing nothing crazy there. Uh, and the takedown tab, of course, is that right there. Um, the serrations, I think, honestly, they're, they're, to me, they feel a little slick, I have to say. So it's got that, uh, that, that pattern, that fish scale pattern that Smith & Wesson does on, on, their, on their pistols. Uh, and they've got some up here as well. Uh, I've tried um, doing the, the front serration racking with that. I found them to be mostly anemic uh, and not very useful at all. But the rear runs here, I actually have slipped sometimes trying to just rack it from the rear here. Um, yeah, they're, they're, mm, they're okay, I guess. I definitely much prefer the bigger serrations here, like on a PPS or a 365. Um, so, I mean, this thing will, will, will draw a lot of comparisons to a 365 just because it is the, um, you know, tiny little pocket pistol, nine millimeter carry market and uh, type of pistol. But honestly, I, I still don't think that the single stack nine millimeters are totally obsolete um, because there's there's more factors into uh, the viability of a carry piece than just capacity, if you ask me. Um, the big thing that I really did not like about the ergonomics on this gun is the magazine release here. So you can see there is a big hump right there before the button and that bothers me because 
trying to uh, eject the mag with my firing hand, I have to, I can't just go in and uh, with my thumb here on the side and just press it in like that. I have to kind of do this weird uh, reach up thing and push down on it uh, in order to get the mag out. Versus say uh, my PPS here, I can just put my thumb right there and push in and it comes right out. So just like that. Uh, I don't have to reposition to push up like this or some other kind of weird way to get it out. I can just press it. Now, of course, they, they do that fencing on purpose to prevent uh, accidental uh, mag releases while you're carrying it. But honestly, that's never been an issue with me ever on any of my guns because, the, I don't know, it just doesn't happen to me. So uh, that little nub right there is, is, is quite annoying. Uh, for the trigger, so this is, of course, the 2.0 trigger, so it is hinged. Um, and it will, of course, not, not fire unless you pull down uh, completely on the back here, or the front, rather. Um, and I, I have to say the trigger on this is actually pretty pretty darn decent. So it's got a little bit of take up, but actually a pretty nice uh, break. The trigger is a little heavy, of course, because it needs to be for you know, uh, defensive carry. It, uh, this is not a target gun by any means. Um, but the trigger on this, it really, really honestly did surprise me with uh, how crisp it was. And even when firing, uh, the trigger would actually uh, run away from me a few times because I underestimated how short the reset was. So reset is pretty quick too. Right there. And it's right there at the wall again. So pretty good, uh, pretty good reset, uh, pretty good trigger, honestly. Uh, the dry firing definitely does not feel uh, the same as actually shooting it with, with, with live ammo, uh, as I discovered. So um, I got you know pretty pretty decent accuracy out of this. I didn't take take it out to 25, but I was shooting it roughly similar to my uh, PPS or other carry guns. So uh, accuracy is perfectly acceptable. Reliability was 100%. I had no jams. Uh, the just getting used to the the, uh, the the exact trigger mechanism and how this thing shoots compared to uh, my other guns. The uh, laser on here, of course, uh, has. Um, I guess you could say three modes, but really more like two. So the first press is going to be a uh, constant laser, and I have it on the wall there. The second press will be a pulsating laser, and you can see it pulsing there, right there. Um, I don't really know what good that is, maybe to kind of draw your eye a little bit more if you're in a light environment where you can't really see the laser too well. But uh, And of course the third press will uh, turn it off. So um, yeah, pretty, uh, pretty basic laser. The, uh, zeroing, I guess, holes, I guess, are, are pretty, pretty obvious as well. I did not uh, zero this laser. I wasn't going to mess with it or anything because it's not my gun. But, uh, yeah, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty nifty to have a nice little laser on there. Uh, I, would, I would personally rather have a, a small uh, flashlight here, uh, but I don't think they make a model that has a, an integrated flashlight, but that would be pretty cool. Um, yeah, as far as uh, uh, shooting, though, they, like I said, the trigger would run away from me a couple times uh, just because I under underestimated how short the, the reset was, but the trigger was quite good. It was pleasurable. Uh, this gun is quite snappy, so uh, I would say it's even snappier than the, the PPS and uh, a 365 even, which is significant. Um, you know, any, any little 9mm pistol in this kind of category will be snappy, but this one was especially so. Uh, even with a very firm grip with the... Um, extended magazine here for a larger grip to get a full full grip on this this is still a very very snappy gun um, it's not necessarily unpleasant or anything it's it's just uh, it goes a little wild um, and the other thing that really bugged me when I was shooting it is the so let's see if I can try to illustrate this here so the knuckle of my thumb here where it connects to my hand right there where it was riding on the pistol about about right there this this part of the of the gun, I guess, right right in this crevice here, where I'm up, up against the gun when I'm when I'm shooting, that that was rubbing up against uh, that part of my my joint, I guess, of my thumb every single shot I took, and it was it was getting mildly unpleasant uh, as as I was shooting, and I keep a I tend to keep a pretty high grip on my pistols. I mean, this is my uh, you know shooting grip, right? Um, and I, I bet I get the I guess that could be alleviated if I move my grip down just a little bit instead of being way up like that. But to me, that seems a little kind of counter counterintuitive because I got all this space back here now and I don't think I'd really want to shoot it like that. But 
yeah, it was writing on, on the back of my uh, joint right there, every shot I took, and uh, it was mildly annoying. Uh, I could still do a full, you know, 50 rounds, 100 rounds ring trip with this, no problem. But uh, I think after a while, it would, it would get a little a little annoying. So uh, no, other, no other pistol I have uh, does that, really, not even the you know, PPS. So however they've designed the ergonomics on, on this gun, uh, it just kind of rubs right there on, on the joint of my thumb. So, uh, but as far as that though, uh, shooting experience was, was was honestly pretty good. Um, you know, standard standard three dot sights on this model. I know the, I know there's plenty of makes and models of night sights out there. Um, but yeah, I could definitely see why these MMP shields, uh, 2.0s, 1.0s, pluses, whatever, are quite popular because uh, I mean this thing this thing just works. It feels feels good in the hand. You know, it's made by a reputable, reputable manufacturer, uh, Smith & Wesson, you know. Um, they make all, all different makes uh, of these things. Uh, I mean, they've got like the extended barrel versions, they've got the optic ready versions, they've got the integrated lasers and stuff. I, I, but I still don't think they have an integrated flashlight one, but that would be pretty cool if they did. Uh, I know they've redesigned the trigger on the Plus models as well. So instead of having this hinged type trigger, it's a more traditional, um, I guess, uh, trigger with a dingus on, on it instead. So um, whether or not one is better than the other, I couldn't really tell you, but I, I personally don't really have a problem with these hinge triggers because honestly, it, it feels pretty, uh, pretty decent. Um, I have no, no issues with it at all. So um, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a decent, decent little gun. But um, yeah, I can definitely see why these are, these are very, very popular. But uh, like I said earlier, even, even in the world of, of micro double stacks that have, you know, uh, 20 plus rounds, you know, in a package that's smaller than this gun, um, you know, I'm being facetious, but uh, I still don't think that these single stacks are necessarily obsolete. I know there's going to be some folks out there that actually would prefer something like this over a 365 uh, or a Hellcat or something like that. So um, yeah, not not bad at all, not bad at all. And uh, it's kind of it's kind of made me want to get a uh, a plus model myself. Or maybe even one of the, the longer barrel uh, versions that have like a MOS cut or a, a ported version of these. That would be pretty cool. Like one of the performance center models. That would be pretty neat. Because, uh, yeah, honestly, I really didn't mind shooting this all this much. And uh, I like I like longer barreled guns. So I think the longer, longer barrel version would be um, more up my alley. So, but yeah. Um, decent, decent little gun. And I'm glad I got the opportunity to try one of these out. Because... With, with a lot of these guns, especially carry guns and stuff, it's, it's really hard to just have a blanket recommendation for, uh, oh yeah, this one's going to be perfect for you, or this one's going to be perfect for you. Because uh, I have my own uh, recommendations and, and, and uh, personal, uh, I guess, preferences, right? But every person is going to be different, everyone's hands are different, and whatever people prefer are going to be uh, different. So I can sit here all day and say these are all great guns, and then and then and then I go off and, and recommend the Walther, and then uh, some guy elsewhere on the internet is going to say the Walther is, is the worst pistol he's ever carried, and, and so on and so forth. So it's hard to, to get these recommendations, but uh, without you know actually trying the guns and, and, and shooting them and trying them for yourself, uh, you know, it's not recommended necessarily to buy sight unseen or or even just not even trying it. So. Uh, that's why I like a lot of ranges that uh, that have rental guns, like your indoor ranges and stuff, so you can try and rent your your gun that you're thinking uh, of buying and trying it out, shooting it, without just going out there and just buying it, and then you start shooting it, and it's like, well, that's not so great. So, um, yeah, very grateful that I was able to try this. And this is absolutely one that I, I, would, I would buy and I would carry if I didn't already have all the other carry guns that I already have. So... Um, but yeah, this this just goes back to the the, the Smith and Wesson polymer frame nine millimeters uh, polymer frame striker fired pistols. I, I've just never really been too enticed with them. Uh, nothing to say there's there's anything wrong with them or anything. I just they're just not my personal preference. So, um, but yeah, uh, maybe someday I'll, I'll I'll come across a Shield Plus, uh, maybe a long barrel version of this or something. But um, yeah, this is this is a recommend for me for sure. And uh, yeah, so, I mean, I, I do like the fact that Smith & Wesson does actually make nice complete packages like this that have the, the lock case, the, the you know, two magazines, that's, that's the minimum you should have. 
Uh, nice holster, you know, laser I could do with or without. Honestly, it doesn't make that big of a difference to me because, um, you know, either, either you're keeping that sucker on the entire time or, or when you, you draw, you know, you have to remember to, one, take your manual safety off and then also put your laser on at the same time. To me, that seems like a little a little too much work to do. And, um, you know, if you're, if you're aiming down your sights, you won't need your laser anyways. But, you know, I, I, could, I could talk about lasers all day. So, yeah, nice handy package. I do like the Smith & Wesson does that because not, not a lot of other manufacturers uh, or brands uh, do that. So uh, it's cool that they just make it easy for uh, consumers to go out there and just kind of get all set up um, with just one, one purchase. So I do think other companies should do that. Uh, and, you know, like Walther definitely does not do that. They don't, they don't have a complete holster set up and, you know, all this fancy stuff and gizmos. So, uh, but yeah, good on Smith & Wesson for doing that. Uh, this isn't, this is a, a, a good carry pistol. I can see why it's so popular. Um, you know, it's a recommend for me. So anyway, just a, just a quick review there. Uh, I don't have much time with this pistol, but, uh, you know, it was nice to be able to, to at least, at least try it. So, and I do recommend that for people too. If you're, if you're looking for your, your carry gun and you're looking for reviews and stuff like that, you can watch reviews all day like me or the people on YouTube, but until you get it like in your hands and you're actually trying it and shooting it and stuff, you, you may, you may end up not liking it. You may end up liking something completely different that you had no idea even existed or something that may not fit your hand very well, but when you went to shoot it, it's like, wow, this is a really good experience. So definitely try before you buy if you can. So that's my advice. But uh, yeah, um, if you're looking at one of these, buy with confidence. So cool. That's all I got for this review and uh, we'll see you next time.